Hello! In this video, I would like to start talking about probability and its application to real-life situations. So what exactly is probability? I often define it as the logic of randomness. Now, you might be asking, well, what is randomness? I could try to give you a very philosophical definition, but since here we are only interested in practical implications, I can simply define randomness in the following way. Whenever you do an experiment in which you cannot predict the outcome with certainty, you have a random experiment, okay? So, for example, when you toss a coin, the outcome could be either heads or tails. You do not know which one beforehand, so it is random. Now, let's say you purchase some stock in a company which today costs $100 per share because you don't know what the price is going to be tomorrow or one year from now with absolute certainty, this is also a random experiment. So nearly everything we do in real life can be defined as some sort of random experiment because we are rarely ever certain or sure about the outcomes of daily events. So for the purposes of this course, without getting too philosophical, randomness is simply the lack of certainty. As I said, pretty much everything we do in real life can be considered in this way. Let's say you purchase a washing machine and you want to know if you should buy the extended warranty or not. What you're really asking yourself is, will your machine break down or not in the next five years? Because you are not sure about that, you don't know with certainty, that's a random experiment. We will of course talk about how to deal with such problems in this course, but the main point right now is that pretty much everything in real life, due to the uncertainties and risks involved, can be potentially dealt with using probability. In this course, our goal is to learn how to use probability and randomness effectively and to our advantage. So now that we know what a random experiment is and how common they are in everyday life, we can discuss probabilities. In probability theory, we assign a probability to each possible outcome of a random experiment. So when you toss a coin, we assign probability of 0.5 to heads. In probability theory, all probabilities are values between 0 and 1. A probability of 1 is the same as 100%. If we are 100% sure something's going to happen, its probability is 1. For instance, the probability that the sun rises tomorrow is 1. And if we are certain that something is not going to happen, the probability is 0. Now, when we say that the probability of heads is equal to 0.5, what do we mean by that? You know, there are a couple of ways you can interpret this. A very important concept regarding this is relative frequency. Relative frequency is when you repeat the same experiment many times and you observe how many times the event happens, how many times you observed heads. So in this case, if you toss the coin 1000 times, you'll observe heads close to 500 times and tails close to 500 times. So then you say that the probability of heads is the number of times you observe heads, which is close to 500, divided by 1000, which equals approximately 50%. So relative frequency is sometimes an effective way of obtaining probability in real life scenarios. So for example, say you go to the doctor and she suggests that you have an operation with a 5% chance of some specific complication. How does the doctor come up with this number? Let's say 1000 people have had this operation and 50 of them have experienced this complication. So we say the probability of that complication is equal to 50 out of every 1000, which is 5%. Luckily, we are living in an age where it is very easy to obtain certain statistics, and we should be able to use those statistics when making decisions in our lives. So let me ask you a question. Suppose you pick a random person out of the population of the US, and I ask you, what is more likely? If that person is killed by some sort of violent crime, or the person kills himself or herself? Which one is more likely? Most people would probably say, okay, being killed by violence is more likely. The truth is that if you look at the statistics, suicide is somewhere around two and a half times more likely than being killed by gun violence or something like that. So why do we think otherwise? This has to deal with the way we assign probabilities in our minds. During everyday life, we are constantly assigning probabilities without even knowing it. And we usually do this using availability heuristics, that is, when something comes to mind more easily, you have heard about more cases of it, then you assign it a higher probability. Now, in this case, while watching the news, you tend to hear more about violent crimes than suicides, so you would assign the former a higher probability. This concept is very important. In situations like this, when we have an important problem, it is crucial that we be aware of this kind of bias or flaw in our intuitive thinking and if we can check the actual statistics, we should do so in order to avoid making a decision based on false assumptions or approximations. For another example, let's say I am worried about being killed. So what should I worry about the most? If you watch the news, you constantly hear about things like violent crimes, uh, 
terrorist attacks, plane crashes, and so on. And you might think that those are the things that are most dangerous and most likely. But if you look at the CDC website and look at the leading causes of death, which include certain diseases, traffic accidents, etc., these things do not even appear on the list. Things such as influenza and pneumonia are in a prominent category, but we do not consider them a significant threat. Again, the reason for this is that these things are not extensively reported in the media. But if a violent crime, a terrorist attack, or a plane crash happens, it will be definitely on the news. If you pick a random person in the US, that person has almost no actual chance of dying in a plane crash, but it is far more likely that the person dies of heart disease or in a car accident. In conclusion, let's talk a bit about what we can do about such things. If I worry about things that can kill me, at least from the perspective of me as a random person in the US, the most effective thing I can do is live a healthy lifestyle in terms of eating right and exercising in order to avoid things like heart disease. I should also avoid activities such as smoking so I can hopefully avoid things like lung cancer. Finally, if you wanted to take this concept even further, you could try to be careful about driving and riding in a car. You could limit your time driving and riding in a car as much as possible and when you are driving, be extra careful. Things like shark attacks, airplane crashes, terrorist attacks, and the violent crimes that we constantly hear about in the news are much less likely to kill a random person than any of those things. Thank you for watching.